Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahole with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. And today, I'm gonna get fit for some new irons. Um, when I got these irons, I've been playing them for a while now, and uh, I was a novice in terms of club fitting. And I think over you know the past few months, we've been doing these videos, and I think I've learned that this, these irons that I have, the specs, maybe not quite for me, and I think you've made some marks after getting some measurements that these are definitely wrong for my swing. Yeah, so tell me what clubs you've been playing, how long you've been playing them for. So these are MP15 irons. Yep. Um, I've had, so I got these at the beginning of last year, and prior to that I was playing MP59s from Mizuno. So uh, I've been a Mizuno iron guy, that kind of that split cavity design. I just wanted to grab something that was similar to what I had been playing before. And uh, now with all this information, I've been learning a lot from you and from our videos. Um, I, love, I know, you know how much club fitting matters, how much these different specs and measurements matter. So. Um, I'm interested to see what uh, I ended up getting fit for today. Yeah, so speaking of your club specs, we took a quick little measurement there. So first thing we measured was the length. So we measured your seven iron and measured at 36 and a half inches. Industry, industry standard today, seven iron, 37 inches is, is pretty standard. So we know you're six feet, mm -hmm. and six feet tall, so you're right on the buffer where they would maybe consider something slightly longer than standard or keeping you in standard length but that would be around about 37 inches. Now when the MP15s were released, 36.75 inches was kind of standard for this set. So they're just a little bit short for you. Okay. We, we know that. So lengthwise, okay. just maybe a little bit short. We also measured the swing weight. The swing weight we measured, it came in at C8. So okay. C8 is a little bit on the lighter side yeah. also. Industry standard is around about D2, D3 for, for most irons. The other measurements we took was the loft and the lie. So we used the lie machine to see that we were at 33.25, I think it was what was the loft on your club. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty close to, a, to standard for a seven iron in that kind of in that cavity back area. Um, we also measured the lie angle. So we noticed it measured it at 62 degrees. Okay. Now industry standard is a little bit different. So Mizuno usually comes in a little bit flatter lie angle, so 61.5 actually was the standard length, standard lie angle for, for, for these particular clubs. And then you have some manufacturers where 62 and a half or even 63 degrees might be standard okay. for, for lie angle. So we'll be definitely testing lie angle out today too. We'll talk about your wrist to floor, so we'll get a static measurement, and then we'll also dynamically test your lie angle as well. Okay, yeah, interesting. So uh, just off the bat there with these numbers, I know that some adjustments need to be made based on pure measurements, and obviously now, I'm going to be upgrading too to something that's a little newer and provides a little bit better performance for me as well. So uh, a lot to change for my game today, but I think it'll be for the best. Well, let's uh, get you to hit a few golf shots and get loose here and we'll take a look at some numbers and then I'll kind of talk about those numbers and we can see if we can fit you find something better than we can be playing. Awesome. All right, so you've had the chance to warm up here for the last 10, 15 minutes. What I want you to do is I want you to hit five or six shots with your current seven iron so we can take a look at some numbers and analyze okay. that data. Perfect. Is that due to the club face being open, or is it, I mean, that's probably part of it, but there's probably more, I would assume, into it than just the open club face? When that club face is open, the ball usually would fly a little higher and spin a little bit more. Okay. So that last one, your spin rate was just over 7,000 RPMs. So we noticed that's maybe a little bit on the high side with regards to spin. What okay. I'm paying attention to is your club speed to ball speed ratio, so smash factor. Yeah. So that last one was 1.28 with your ball speed around about 100 and 120 miles an hour. I would like to see that smash factor at least get in the one threes, but okay. if we get a little bit higher, then that's gonna generate a little more yeah. distance as well. Sure. That was wide open. A little bit wide open. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got you a chance to hit five shots. I want to analyze all the shots that you hit here, and okay. what I want to do first is just eliminate that last shot, because that was a little bit more of an outlier when notice it was kind of yeah. a little bit over here to, to the right. So let's just take that one out. We've still got it up there. Um, and then just kind of talk about some numbers with regards to what we're seeing in the data. So let's take a look at some averages with those five shots that we hit. I did take one miss hit out, that was the last one you hit. You'll notice mm -hmm. on the top there that's grayed out. I kept it up there so we can obviously pay attention to the numbers at least, but it's not gonna be included in the averages. Mm -hmm. 
So first thing we look at is club speed. Think of club speed as potential distance. If you swing harder at the ball, you can potentially right. hit the ball further. But at the end of the day, if you're not hitting the middle of the club face, it really doesn't matter as much. So timing obviously is more important. With your club speed at 92.7 miles an hour on average, I would categorize you into an extra stiff golf shaft. Okay. I would say the cutoff is around probably around 85 to 87 miles an hour for stiff flex. So anything higher than that, we maybe start looking at a little bit stiffer golf shaft. Oh, okay. So your current club that you're playing, you've got the Nippon 1150 GH stiff. So it's a little bit lighter and it's also a stiff shaft. So you may feel like you have a little bit of control on the club face if we go a little bit heavier. As part of our fitting process, what we do is we test three or four different heads against each other to see which head's performing the best with the same golf shaft. But then we'll explore those golf shafts a little bit more. So then we'll test the weight out okay. a little bit. Um, so that's what club speed is. I already know that you maybe need something a little bit heavier, maybe a little bit stiffer than what you're mm -hmm. coming playing. I mentioned timing. So ball speed is very important. I think ball speed is the most important thing when we're looking at clubs. So you'll notice on average your ball speed was 121.8. That fourth shot you hit that went further was 125 miles an hour. So more ball speed usually is gonna equal more distance. Mm -hmm. Usually when you catch it in the middle of the club face, ball speed is gonna be higher. If you catch it thin, fat, leave the face open, that ball speed is gonna be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So when we're testing all these different heads, if there's one that gives us higher ball speed, it's probably performing better. Sure. Smash factor is a simple equation. It's ball speed divided by club speed. So if you pay attention to the average, 121.8 divided by 92.7 will equal 1.31. I mentioned that we'd, I'd love to see if we can get that smash factor in the mid 1.3 range. We had 135 and a 134 in there. Those ones did go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. It's an efficiency rating. Yeah. So as we're testing, if that smash factor goes up, that ball speed goes up, the club's performing better. Launch angle is an interesting one. There's really no perfect launch angles, everyone swings, swings differently. I will say a range of about 16 to 22 for the most part for a seven iron is what we, what we typically see. What I will say is when the ball launches higher, it's gonna tell me that that club face is a little bit more open. So that one that's grayed out right now, we'll notice the launch angle was 21.3 degrees. When that face is a little open at, sure. at impact, you're actually adding mm -hmm. luff, which is gonna cause the ball to launch yeah. higher. Same thing if that ball was drawing, the club face would be yeah. a little bit closed, you're actually de-lofting a little bit there. So ballpark, you know, 16, 17 to 22 for the most part, but everyone swings differently how they try and yeah. get that ball up in the air. I always say spin is king when you're trying to search for maybe a little bit more distance, especially in driver fittings. In iron, iron fittings, it's important because we want to stop the ball on the green. You will notice that you're on average hitting the ball about 113 feet in the air. So you have plenty of stopping power. If you take a look at your landing angle, it was 51.7 degrees. So we could probably get away with a little bit less spin than what's going on right now. I'm gonna guess when you play, if you hit a full swing with a wedge, I'm gonna guess that thing may land on the green and probably rip back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. And I'm gonna guess also if you hit a shot into, into the wind, you might get caught up in the wind a little oh, bit yeah. more there too. You're just generating maybe a little bit too much spin. Part of that's to do with leaving that face a little bit open, naturally, if the face is open, it's gonna spin more. If it, basically, if a shot of fades, it's gonna spin more. Mm -hmm. um, if the ball draws, it's gonna use spin a little, little bit less. Okay. So I would like to see if we can maybe get that spin rate down a little bit. Um, obviously, direction is important too, so I'd love to try and get your dispersion pattern a little bit more to the left. And we'll yeah. talk about lie angle and how that may help us here in, in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd def definitely love to try and get that club face a little bit more square for you at impact too, okay. to generate better contact. In this environment, I'm not a swing instructor, but I do the numbers pretty well. So your attack angle, notice how it says negative 3.1 down on average. Tour average is about negative four for a seven iron. Okay. So that tells me when you're playing outside, I'm gonna guess you probably don't take a lot of turf. You're probably a little bit more of a picker than a digger, essentially. Okay. Um, that's also gonna help us when it comes to wedges to figure out maybe what bounce and grind okay. that we should be playing as well. Um, club path. You'll notice on average your club path was very neutral. So 0 0.2 degrees. Very, very good on average. But you will notice that your face angle was open 4.3 degrees. <laughs> so that's part of the reason why the ball is yeah. going to the right a little bit too. So your path is great with your face angle being you know, a little bit 
open to your path, you will notice your face to path also is very, very similar. Yeah. Um, but you will notice consistently you're seeing positive numbers. On track, man, anytime you see a negative number when it comes to club path or face angle, it means to the left. Okay. Anytime you see a positive number, it means to the right. So you're technically swinging ever so slightly in to out, very neutral, um, but you're leaving that face angle a little bit open, which right. is causing that ball to kind of go. go which to is the right why you're seeing too. the feet of curve going right significantly on almost all those shots. Exactly. That's why I was saying all the shots had an R on the side, yeah. so it means the curve ball was curving to the right. The one shot, that fourth shot, I'll come back to again. It didn't have as much curve to the right, and that's why it went a little bit mm -hmm. further and a little bit straighter for sure. us. Sure. Okay. Good. Part of lie angle. I like to get a static measurement first. So we talked about maybe leaving that club face a little mm -hmm. bit open, missing a little bit to the right. This club may maybe a little bit too flat for you. So I'm curious to see what your wrist to four measurement is. Okay. So this helps us figure out line. So yeah, this? You, yeah stow, hold your hands down by your side for me. Okay. Just kind of naturally. And I'll get this nice and straight right here. So your wrist to four measurement is 36 and a half inches. If I was going to turn that around, you can see it's at 36 and, and a half right here. I've pulled up this chart up here. This is the ping um, wrist of four measurement chart. It's very universal across all manufacturers. You will notice if I intersect 36 and a half with six feet, notice how it puts this on the border here between green and white. Okay. Green dot in ping terminology is two degrees upright. White dot in ping terminology is three degrees upright. So your clubs are very standard right now. If we can maybe get a club that's going to be a little bit more upright for you based on your wrist of four measurement, we might be able to get that ball okay. to turn over a little bit easier for you and maybe not miss it to the right as much. Nice. Okay. So that's maybe the first red flag that I'm seeing. Now keep in mind that this is a static measurement. We want to dynamically test this at the end of the fitting too. So I've got the Callaway golf ball and lion gold tape that I want to test out at the end there too okay. as well. So. Okay, Drew, so we've had the chance to test a few clubs out this year doing a lot of content on our YouTube channel. Is there maybe three or four different manufacturers or mm -hmm. clubs that you really wanted to test versus your current gamer? Yeah, well, I mean, as I've been a Mizuno player, uh, I, will, I would like to try the MP20 MMC. That's kind of the similar profile as to this MP15 and MP59 I've had. So the MP20 MMC for sure, um, I got the chance to hit both Callaway Apex Pro and the Ping i210s, and I've liked both of those as well. So that those three would be kind of the ones I'd be interested in. Okay, and then would you be interested in kind of having the same clubs all the way through the set, or you'd be maybe interested in maybe a combo set as well? Yeah, you know, I think I would like a combo set. Um, I think I could use the forgiveness maybe at the top of the set a little bit. So yeah, I'd try something. If there is a, I know the MP20s have the HMB, Apex you go with the Apex Pro, and then the standard Apex. So. Um, yeah, that'd be great to maybe experiment with that too. Yeah, and ping 210, you could maybe add in the i500, I 500. with kind of like a four or five iron okay. as well. Uh, we obviously, want to make sure distance gapping is important, yeah. so we want to make sure they would also be separated within okay. that 10 to 15 yard, yards. But I think though that would be three good options for you to okay. try. Perfect. First club I want you to test is the ping i210. So all we're right. going to test all these three clubs with the exact same golf shaft. I've selected the Dynamic Gold X100 based on your club speed. Okay. Probably going to feel a little bit heavier, and a little stiffer than what you're playing right now. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll test with the same shaft right now as we're testing heads. Then we'll dive deeper and then we'll test some different shaft options. Okay. So. Okay, so same thing when you're hitting yours, we'll hit five or six shots with each club and then we'll okay. pay attention to all the numbers. This one looks a little bit bigger, a little bit more surface area, thicker top line seemingly compared to what I have okay. been using. That sounded good. Yeah, that was good. Nice. Okay. So just wanted to show you those four shots that you hit with the, the i210 versus the your current gamer. So mm -hmm. what you know is really interesting is your club speed hasn't changed at all. So 92.9, 92.7. So you're swinging the same. What we did pick up right there was a little more ball speed and a better yeah. smash factor. The interesting part is the spin rate went down, so 6,700 to 6,000. Also, the spin consistency was excellent, so that's really good. You mentioned that you were hitting a little bit higher. Yes, you were, but because it, you were hitting a little bit higher with a little less spin, you really didn't lose any distance. You gained distance. 
um, and you still didn't lose any stopping power. So it was stopping within about six yards. So that already changed with against with against your stopping power. Obviously, the consistency there was a lot better. Yeah, already making progress. Yep, based so on good, that dispersion. Good start. Next club. What do we got here? Pex yes. Pro. Okay. Pro. This is definitely a smaller kind of blade length, it seems like, than the 210. Okay. But I do like the look, though. This one seems to sound a little bit louder almost. Yeah, it definitely sounded like it had a little more pop on the, on yeah. the good shots that you hit. Right. I'm just gonna see if there's, so keep up kind of your best fourth, each one. That one there was just a little bit shorter. So let's just see. So once again, your club speed was right around that 92.7, 92.9 mark. So that hasn't changed at all. You get a little bit more ball speed with the Callaway Apex Pro. It was spinning a little bit more than the i210. Uh, and it was going a little bit further to the right as well, which is kind of interesting. Now, the good news is they both have, you know, you notice that dispersion pattern's a little bit more to the left, which is, which is good news. So it helps with your golf swing because you leave that face a little bit open, as opposed to getting mm -hmm. rid of these shots here that yeah. don't go quite as far. Um, yeah, so you were hitting this one just a tad higher and spinning just a little bit more. Now, question for you, is that too high or is that still okay? I mean, uh, where would you recommend there? It's borderline too high. Um, tour average is about 100 to 110 feet in the okay. air. Um, but keep in mind that you are leaving that face angle okay. open. Sure. If we look at all the shots here, your, your face angle, you know, you're leaving that face angle three to four degrees open with each club. When you do mm -hmm. leave it open, it's gonna fly a little bit sure. higher. So maybe that's yeah. the reason for it, not necessarily the fact that I need to change the club necessarily. So I believe the upright angle would help, will help you without, how, without you having to make any swing adjustments at all. Obviously, if you wanted to draw the ball, then you would obviously have to work on your club face yourself, move yeah. an instructor to try and feel like you can draw right. the ball a little bit too. So well, yeah, this is me trying yeah. to hit the most dead straight shots I can, and yeah. obviously I'm yeah. not doing that, but. <laughs> When I'm in a club fitting environment, I try my best to stay away from coming in there, jump and say, hey, you should try this with regards to swing instruction because yeah. I know how many golf shots it takes to make a real swing change. So I'm trying to fit the, the customer for their golf swing yeah. and what they're resenting here because I know that it's probably not going to change without a real serious commitment. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, good point. Okay. okay. All right. Next one. Mizuno MP20 MMC. I know you're excited to hit this club. Yeah. You haven't really hit this one as solid. Your good shot was great, but then you'll notice we got a little a few short and yeah. sh short, and then a few to the right as well. Okay, so really interesting. Um, what I did notice when the last club, you said you maybe felt like you're swinging that a little bit harder. Yeah. Your club speed did jump up a little bit, but what happened really when you did swing a little bit harder is your ball speed really didn't go up at, at all there. So that's really interesting to see. Your smash factor actually wasn't any higher than any of them either too. So you didn't quite hit it quite as far as you potentially could, even though you were swinging mm -hmm. harder. So I always bring up club speed as potential distance. End of the day, obviously ball speed where you catch on the club face is yeah. more, more important. I did like how, you know, we'll notice we've got uh, those shots here that were all pretty, cons pretty consistent with regards to distance. So that's good. So if you look left to right, it was at least the right distance. Yeah. But you'll notice the trend with this particular club of leaving it out to the right. You yeah. notice a pretty similar trend with the Mizuno clubs, the white and yours, maybe just leaving the face a little bit more open with, with that particular club there too. Mention what happens when you leave the face open, that spin rate also kind of goes up. So 6,500 RPMs with the Apex Pro and the Mizuno, those would tend to lead a mm -hmm. little bit to the right. When 
the you were hitting the I210, it was just a little bit straighter. Obviously, if you looked at this screen here, I do like that yellow circle because it was closer to the middle, yeah. for, for sure. You tell me, I mean, you hit five or six shots with yeah. each club. Was there one that felt better, looked better, feel like you've maybe presented a little bit better contact at all, or? It's interesting because, so the Apex Pro, I think was, you know, looking down at it, it was kind of smaller. Uh, which initially I didn't think, I mean, looking at my, right before I hit the shots, I didn't really like it, but uh, I, it kind of grew on me pretty quickly. Yep. And uh, I think at this point that would be sort of, for me, in terms of feel, I did, you know, I, a lot of people don't necessarily like that louder sound. Um, I didn't mind it at all. And I like that dispersion too, pretty consistent there. Obviously the ping was good too. So Drew, what would you say you would typically shoot when you play 18 holes? Thomas, I'm usually about, mid 70s creeping up into the 80s once in a while okay so would you say that your short game or your long game is more has maybe as, as better do you feel like you putt and chip well to keep your score well or do you feel like your bull striking keeps you in it i'd probably see the short game uh in terms of getting up and down uh saving pars for example that's probably where i excel a little bit better yeah so we talked about the combo set option you know we you were talking about how you like the look of the callaway apex pro I would be curious to see what actually happened if you hit the apex okay. as well, just to see what actually happened. Because it's going to be a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. Um, end of the day, forgiveness is, is, is a great thing. Sure. <laughs> we, we all need it. Uh, it may not be as workable, but it may fly a little bit straighter for you, I think, which would be mm -hmm. a good option. So I want to just throw that as a wild card okay. in there. Right now, I would say the Ping I210 is the best, based on yeah. numbers. And if you'd like the look of the Ping I210, I would say we'd absolutely kind of go, go okay. down that route. What I've found with the Mizuno, I know you like the, the feel, they, they feel great off the club face, yeah. is you're just not quite hitting it as well. It's, for some reason, you're just having a hard time getting that club face yeah. square at impact. Um, so I would probably lean towards okay. between the I-210, and I wanted to maybe just throw in okay. the, the Apex to see how well you hit that as well. Yeah, that ping circle is you know, the, the best one up there for sure. And uh, I'm very interested now that you mentioned that Apex Pro. I kind of put these three as sort of my favorites because they are in that player's cavity sort of design. Yep. Um, but as you can tell, I could use some forgiveness as well. I'm not hitting everything perfect in the center of the face and that's where an apex type of iron could come into play. Yeah, so we could talk about the combo set part too. Yep. You could play apex pro maybe like eight, nine wedge, okay. but maybe you could play apex kind of like four through through seven. Okay, why don't you mention I-500 too? Yep. Um, do you think you could maybe grab that as well and we can maybe hit just a few with Apex and I-500. Yeah, let's throw both those two in the mix and okay. we can talk about combo set between those Sweet. two. So let's test the Callaway Apex out here. Okay. Let's just see how well you hit this particular club. I'm just curious to see a little bit more forgiving club and see how it works out yeah. for you. This doesn't look too, I mean, it, it looks like it still falls into that player's cavity almost looking down. It's not a max game improvement iron by, right. by all means. It definitely is not. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's super thick or anything, like it would be a forgiving iron yep. necessarily. But And that's the same with the I-500. It still yeah. is kind of your distance player's club. Very nice. One, that one four, felt one smash. That one felt really that was good. Excellent right there. So we did have a couple of those first couple of swings coming back here were a little, little bit misses right there. So I'm yeah. going to take those out. But I just wanted to show you the advantage of playing a club that's maybe just ever so slightly more forgiving, strong lofted. So you'll notice your club speed, once again, was 92.7 miles an hour. Um, but your ball speed went up and smash factor went up. What also happened was the spin rate dropped a little yeah. bit too. So Carry to total distance was still the same, so it's still five to six yards. Um, but you would notice these three shots that you hit right there, that really, really was pretty impressive right there. So mm -hmm. I know you like the Apex Pros, look the look of them. Yeah. But I feel like a good combo set would be a good option with, with those Apexes as yeah. well to, to generate a set on those longer clubs to be a little more forgiving. Yeah, I like that. And I do, you know, I think I fall into that maybe kind of in between sort of a the player's cavity and then that is kind of, I guess this would be a player's distance iron. But I do think after hitting some today, 
you know, some of the misfits I've had, um, I think I do fall in between those two, which is where, like you said, a combo set might be the best. Now I think, you know, we'll hit some of the i500, but then I guess the next question would be where does that start, right? Like what club do I start yes. playing the player's distance versus the player's cavity? What I usually talk about with my players is the transition is where do you feel more comfortable maybe going at a flag or where do you feel more comfortable maybe just aiming for the middle of the green every single time? Yeah. So if you like to maybe go at the flag a little bit more with say a seven or eight iron, then you'd probably play that little, that more workable club. If you feel more comfortable just with those longer irons, just going to the middle of the flag every single time and try and obviously make sure you hit the green, then that's probably what, mm -hmm. where I'd make that transition there too. Sure. I, for myself, when I'm playing, I do the opposite. I obviously have a combo set, but I have blades and then I have cavity packs. So I make the transition at seven iron for I bring my begin the blades at seven iron, and then I play my cavity back irons for four okay. through six, because seven iron for me is the cutoff. Yeah. After seven iron, I have a harder time to feel like I want to go at the flag. Got it. So, I'm going. I'm going pin seeking my seven iron through wedges on my pin seeking clubs. The others I'm a little bit more conservative with. So I, sure. that's what I would recommend when you're trying to make that okay. combo set decision. Yeah, I think seven iron would probably be a good cutoff too, uh, based on the way I play. But yeah, I think we'll hit the I-500 here yep. and then um, we can see based on how these two hit because I'm intrigued now by the I-500 because of how tight that I-210 circle was. Yeah, this one too really looks like a player's iron. I mean, it looks, looking down at it, it looks like it's maybe even smaller of a you know, blade length than the I-210. Yeah, it's unique. I may expect this to have maybe a little bit of pop. A little bit of pop, all right. Nice, that was good. Oh, oh look at that. Good. Look what happens when that club face right there wasn't actually open. That's different. Yeah, that was definitely different. Okay. It's a good different though. That was definitely a good different. Can I keep up those best three and just see if anything stands out to us? And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take away yours. Okay. And I'm gonna take away the Mizuno MMC. So that's way we're gonna kind of compare the differences between the two of them. Okay. Here. So if we look at the dispersion pattern, we'll notice with the Callaway Apex Pro, that's the purple circle, and you've got the Callaway Apex, that's the orange circle. Pretty small circles, so pretty, pretty tight dispersion patterns going on there. If we look at the Ping uh, I-210, so that's the yellow circle, and then you've got the green circle with the I-500. They may have been just a little bit more straighter on average, but just a little bit wider when it comes mm -hmm. to your dispersion pattern there. Um, so that's interesting. We obviously notice the difference between the more distance players are in distance. Yeah. You were hitting those 188, 185 carry versus sure. 176, 174 carry. So they're going to be a little bit stronger in loft um, by a couple of degrees, but a couple of degrees is not going to make a difference of 10 to 13 yards, essentially. Looking at the distance of my clubs when I was first hitting, you can tell obviously a major difference in carry and dispersion, too, just from that circle. So we're already making a ton of progress. Now, I wanted to ask you for your preference on the consistency of dispersion. Do you prefer, is it more important to have consistent distance or like an east to west consistency, so to speak, on the map, or would you rather have more consistent north to south? Because these circles, you know, I think ping has the advantage if you're talking like a horizontal circle, and then yeah. maybe the, uh, the vertical circle or advantage would go to the Callaway clubs. I always look for the smaller circle. So for me, yeah. I always look for the tiniest okay. circle. I would say east to west is more important because if you pull the shot or leave that club face open, usually you're gonna see that ball go further. Probably the pull is usually gonna go further and that one that you leave the face open is gonna yeah. go a little bit shorter. But if it's still going the same distance, the carry distance is still gonna be okay. So it still might cover that bunker that you're trying to cover if you leave that face a little yeah. bit open. 
if we have kind of north to south dispersion, we may get a flyer off the green. We, oh, okay. Or you may come up short in the water. So we want to make sure that the carry distance, because these are still your scoring clubs. You're still trying to hit the green with these clubs. Um, you still want to have that exact distance, carry mm -hmm. distance to be consistent all the way through. Sure, yeah. And to be honest, between both of them, if we look at your averages here, they're, you know, we're talking I210 was plus or minus 1.1 yard and Callaway yeah. Apex Pro was plus or minus 2.5 yards. So that's very, very good. And then if you look at your distance players, categories of Callaway Apex and I500 plus 1.6 plus one, we're talking kind of one yard. So it's not, both of them are great options, essentially yeah. is what I'm saying. So I would say at this point, it would come down to which one maybe you like look better of. We know we've narrowed it down to, but we definitely want to do a combo set and we would probably transition from like that seven or eight iron yeah. for those cavity irons and distance players irons in, in, in there as well. Um, but yeah, so I would, is there one that felt better to you? Is there one that presented more confidence to you when looking down at it? Um, I think in terms of the players' uh, cavity irons, I like the look of the Apex Pro a little bit better than the I-210. Right. I think I would flip it almost with the player's distance ones where it seemed like, you know, this I-500, I like this one a lot better than the Apex. So uh, I think overall though, I, I do get what you're saying about the sort of east to west or horizontal dispersion. So I think just by a hair, I think I'd give Ping the slight edge with the I-500 and the 210. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love the fact that, you know, it was maybe a little bit straighter yeah. as well. So that, that was good. I know that last one, you were able to actually get that club face to turn over a yeah. little bit there as well, which is going to help us a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, end of the day, you want to make sure you feel comfortable with what you're playing, but, but obviously the numbers speak for themselves. Yeah. So. Okay, so statically you fit into green dot. We'll notice right here, this has got a green yep. dot on the, on the fitting cl club here. I want to also dynamically test your line go as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape on the club face, and then I've also got this golf ball here that's got a groove right through the, through the middle of it. And I'm just going to see where you catch it on the club face on this piece of tape, okay. and how that groove is aligned up. And I'm not worried about the numbers on Trackman. Um, with when you have tape on the club face, it may give us incorrect spin numbers, so I'm not too worried about that. Obviously, the direction will, will tell us mm -hmm. as well, but I want to see where on the club face that you hit this. Okay, so notice how that spun a little bit more right yeah, there. Yeah, that looks like the spin number is not quite okay. perfect. Notice how we caught it just slightly on, on the toe side there. And notice how this lie angle right here essentially is lining up to maybe where it says adjust upright. So it's saying kind of one degree. This is a green dot. So I would, re I would recommend must maybe point on borderline between maybe going a little bit more upright to okay. get that club face to release over. We know you leave that club face open. Mm -hmm. So when you need leave that club face open, a little bit extra help is definitely going to help us there okay. too. So I would almost be recommending the white dot as, oh, for as well for, okay. for ping. So it's going to be a little bit more. Yeah, so that's three degrees upright. So three degrees upright. So, three degrees upright. Okay. Yeah. so I want you to hit another one here. I just want to see how consistent that is. But right now, that's just a little bit facing where it says adjust upright. So notice how it's matching mm -hmm. that line. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hit that one perfectly. No, you didn't. Your ball speed was down a little bit on that one. But it that's about where I'm sure that's. I mean, that's the light angle measurement the whole time, probably. Yeah. So. Sound a little more solid. Yeah. That one was really good. Let's see what this tells us right here. Oh, interesting. Almost the same. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so almost the same right there. Um, What's interesting also, I'm paying attention to where you hit on the club face here too. So I would want to go, as you can see, it's matching up where it says one degree. So yeah. I want to go one degree more upright. This could be related to the length of the golf club too. So remember, your clubs are half an inch shorter than this club. Yeah. So a club that's going to be a little bit shorter is going to bring you even more this way. So mm. what I want to try is I actually want to try and see if we go a little bit longer in the club and see if that gets this 
a little bit further away okay. from, from the toll there. If it doesn't, then I would say standard length because it's not going to be a big change. Yeah. But I just want to see what happens if we go just a little bit longer with the club head. Okay, so this club is half an inch longer. Notice how it's got white versus orange. This is a okay. way to, you know, so it is a stiff shaft, but it, I don't happen to have one that's plus a half in the X100. But I just want to see what happens when we go a little bit longer with the okay. club and where you catch it on the club face. Let's see if that affects the, yeah. if it's on the toe or on the heel or anything. Yeah, I just want to see where it is on the club face. Interesting. What do you think? Magic. <laughs> really. Right in the center. Right almost. in the center of the club face. Yeah. So what happened right there was that was right in the middle of the club face. So we know you're on the buffer between going a little bit longer with a golf club. Yeah. Um, so we'll notice what happened when that we kinda, that, that kind of helps confirm too. maybe that uh, lengthening the shaft is maybe the play a little bit. Correct. Yeah. So magic right in the middle of the club face. <laughs> That's obviously what we what we want right there. Uh, we notice that line go still is just kind of leaning just a little bit right there. Yeah. It's not as much. So I would almost go probably plus two and a half for okay. the line go. So I would just say green dot, then I'd try and just ask for them to try and have the measurement to be you know, two and a half versus, versus okay. three. But I love the fact that it was right in the middle of the club yeah. face. So that just reaffirms that we need to be just a little bit longer with regards to the, to the club length. Okay. Which, when you're six feet, you're right on the buff buffer. So I would actually recommend plus a quarter inch. Okay. I would recommend and plus a quarter length. inch okay. and, and shaft length as opposed to going plus a half. Plus a half is going to be one inch longer than what you currently have with your arms. Oh, it'd be so maybe it a bit might of an be a little there. bit of an adjustment. Okay. Um, with you being also on the buffer, you know, we, we're right on the, on the point there. It's okay to go right in between. So okay. I'd go plus, plus a quarter, um, but we know what happened when we get a little bit longer yeah. is we got in the middle of the club face. So that's good. So I just wanted to test a different golf shaft and, you know, based on your club speed, we know we fit into extra stiff. Mm -hmm. The Dynamic Gold X100 is, weighs about 130 grams. So it's, it's a pretty heavy golf shaft compared to what you've been playing. So I want to see what something's kind of like slightly in between. So I'm just going to test a different golf shaft here. This is the Project XLZ okay. 6.5. Just the fact that you have the club face open, it's a little higher ball speed. But let's just see, take those two missets out, just like we did with everything else. I can feel though, and see that kind of, as we go, that tendency to leave the face open is kind of being eliminated, which I like a lot. Yeah. So what I like with this last golf shaft is, once again, your club speed's 92.6. 92.7 miles an hour, so you're, you're pretty good at this. You're pretty good at kind of the, <laughs> at testing, keeping your club speed kind of the same. But your ball speed went up. So your ball streak speed striking was really, really good. So 130 miles an hour. So smash factor was even higher yet yep. with that particular model right there. Um, obviously your carry distance went up a couple yards there as well. Spin rate went down. Um, now because you you also got that height down a little bit there too, which is, we were talked about you being a little bit on the two on the higher side there as yeah. well. So that's more realistic numbers what I would expect out of the i500 seven iron from you based on the amount of speed that you generate. Yeah. So we went from, when you were hitting yours, 121 ball <laughs> speed. With your club, your club speed being the exact same, 92.7 versus 92.6, but ball speed at 121 to one, almost 131. So you almost picked up 10 miles an hour ball speed without having to swing any harder. So your smash factor went up 0 0.10. Spin went from 6,700 to 5,200 spin. So carry 168 to 190. 
So a little bit different. Yeah. So based on what you're seeing here, we know that you hit the bull high enough. So a lot of people may say, hey, isn't that spin rate just a little bit too low? Because you hit the bull high enough, you can get away with a little, little bit less spin. Sure, okay. And we're also gonna have I-500s in kind of your longer irons, and then we're gonna transition to 210s yeah. as well. So you picked so. up good distance there, flew a little bit higher to give us a little bit better stopping power, and that thing was stopping within eight yards, yeah. which is really, really good. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's going to be an adjustment. I, now I've got to go play, right, when I get these and yep. uh, get used to sort of the, the numbers and hit some range and figure out distances. But I like the idea of combining the I-500 at about a 7-iron probably and then going 8-9 pitching wedge with I-210. I think that, to me, that sounds like a really good plan because I like okay. that circle up there a lot, the, uh, the pink one there. Okay. So with that being said, we need to talk about gapping. Mm -hmm. So we know that the I-500 is a little bit stronger than the Ping I-210 is. So we're going to need to have these clubs tweak just a little bit to create that combo set so we can have that 15-yard yeah, okay. carry distance apart with, e with each club. So on the custom order form, I will write that in, essentially how I want that to be done. But what I want to do here is I do want to just bring up those two specs and just kind of talk about how we want to have those. Yeah. Um, those so that the lofts are kind of... Uh you know, equal is apart from each other, right? That's what you're going exactly. to be looking for. Yeah. Okay, so the loft on the I-210 7 iron is 33 degrees. Okay. The loft on the I-500 7 iron is 30.5 degrees. So what I would recommend is bending the 7 iron a little bit weaker and having the I-210 8 iron just a little bit stronger to kind of help okay. gap that essentially. And we're going to still have that three to four gap through the entire set. So we'll kind of gradually kind of get that accurate all the, all the way through to give you that 15 yeah. yard, yard apart right there. Because otherwise, if we were going to Right, go if, you're gonna bend, if you're going to go stock lofts. Yeah, we might have a 25 yard difference. Right, I'm sure that goes for any type of combo set you have because you, these stock lofts are different. You have to kind of bend them to make sure they fit well, right? Yep, exactly. So we would go, I would probably go the, the 32 degrees with the I-500 on loft. It's, still, it's not going to go quite as far, but it's still going to give you that penetrating lower spin bull flight okay. and a little more forgiveness there. And then I would recommend, so 32, and then the I-210s would probably go at like 36, so like one degree stronger. So then the, they'll still be four degrees apart. Okay. And then we could go nine iron, probably like at 40, 40 and a half. And then pitching wedge kind of like 45. Okay. Just kind of keep it, yeah. uh, so it flows a little bit better for, for okay. the set with a combo set there too. Um, what I will bring up also with the I-210 is your pitching wedge loft is 45 degrees. What is the loft on your current pitching on your current gap wedge, sand wedge? I am playing a 50, 54, and 58 right now. Okay, so that's going to flow really, really well. So if we don't need to replace your current wedges, I would recommend obviously playing playing those right now at 50, 54, 58. Notice how it gives us that four to six degree gap between yeah. each club. A lot okay. of times when we fit people customers into new irons will notice there's a little bit of shock that pitching wedge is going to be around that 45 degree range as opposed to 47, 48 and much older yeah. technology. There's a lot of players usually play like a 52, 56, 60. If you go from 45 to 52, there would be right. a seven degree gap. Because you have a 50 degree already, it, it flows really well. Mm -hmm. So I also want to get a hand okay. measurement from you as well. So hold your hand, I like that from there. So what I'm doing is from kind of your wrist crease to your longest finger is measuring the length of your hand size here. We go right there, we'll notice it's right about eight and a quarter, and your longest finger here is three and a quarter. So if we look at this grip measurement chart right here, we'll notice eight and a quarter to three and a quarter cuts us kind of right on the border between white and gold. White in ping terminology is standard size, okay. and gold and pink terminology is mid-size. 
current grips you're playing right now, they're, they're standard, correct? Mm -hmm. um, just do me a favor real quick. So what I'm noticing right here is, you notice how this is digging in a little bit right there? Okay. So that tells me that it's you would, like that. yeah, so you notice how it's digging in right there? Tells me that you need to play, be it playing a grip that's gonna be a little bit bigger for comfort reasons. Okay. So I would be recommending the mid size since you're on, on the bubble okay. between the two of them right there. Make sense? Yeah. All right, Thomas, well, thank you for fitting me. That was really, I haven't had an iron fitting truly for you know a number of years now. So it's something I needed to do. I learned a lot about my own swing and I uh, learned that, you know, I, the one thing I was really astonished by was the uh, lie angle test with the tape on the face and how just lengthening the shaft by was it a half inch for that particular test made such a huge difference. So stuff like that is just, it's unique to the second swing kind of experience in the fitting that you won't just get by what I, you did with my previous irons, just went out and bought something off the shelf. Uh, and I'm gonna certainly improve my game with these uh, ping irons. Yeah, end of the day where you catch it on the club face is really important. So yeah. one, getting the right lie angle for you. We talked about green dot, which is two degrees upright, but also the right length as well. So the right length is gonna get you to hit it more in the middle of the club face. I find with people that maybe hit it on the toe, give them just a little bit more, more room, it's gonna maybe help them hit it a little bit more mm -hmm. in the middle of the face. Opposite also, if you catch it on the heel, going a little bit shorter is also gonna yeah. Yeah, catch more towards the middle of the club face too. So it's really important. This is gonna be great. Ping, I-500, I-210, the combo set should work great for me, kind of in between that player's cavity, player's distance, uh, iron categories. So I'm really excited to get these, test them out, and uh, they should, based on the, the, the chart here, the numbers, the dispersion, should help me uh, hit more greens, lower my score. Yeah, I'm really excited for you. I mean, we picked you up about 20 yards, <laughs> well, if we're talking kind of seven iron versus mm -hmm. seven iron. Now that's the I-500 versus yours. Yeah. When you're hitting the I-210s, you pick up 10 yards. So that's by just reducing the spin down a little bit, getting that flight a little bit straighter, and direction was much better mm -hmm. too. So that was, it was fun to see the progress as we're fitting you today. Thomas, thank you again. This is awesome, and I'm looking forward to playing the new irons.